I read this article uh, on collectiveevolution.com and it brings some very, very good, interesting points and I want to make a video on this and address this because this has happened a lot in my life and I'm sure that I'm no different than any other guy out there. The story was called, I wasn't treating my husband fairly and it wasn't nice. A very powerful story. Now in this story I'm going to give two scenarios. The one scenario that's depicted in the article is option B. But I'm going to, for a second, go over a theory of option A. Now in this story, uh, how a woman come to understanding through reflection, something that may be a challenge many marriages and relationships face. Well, the story is a woman realizing how she was treating a man. This can be applied in any case to both genders. I believe we are in a very transformative time when it comes to relationships. It seems deep inside many of us longing for a different experience when it comes to relationships. I believe stories like this, and they're not incredibly profound or anything, touch on that growing awareness within us that are challenging us to question how we operate in our relationship. That's how it starts off. Now, this here, she begins her story by explaining this. My aha moment happened because of a package of hamburger meat. I want to remember, what is your hamburger meat? And then when I mention that later on, you'll see where I'm getting at. I asked my husband to stop by the store to pick up a few things for dinner. When he got home, he plopped the bag on the counter. I started pulling things out of the bag. And I realized he got the 70-30 hamburger meat, which means it's 70% lean and 30% fat. I asked, what's this? Hamburger meat. He replied, slightly confused. You didn't get the right kind, I said. I didn't. He replied with a brow furrow. Was it some other brand you wanted or something? Let's stop there for a moment. Let's go to option A. What she should have said. How she should have said it. Option A. Well, hon, uh, I normally get 80-20. Maybe you didn't know that, but next time, try to get the, uh, less fat on the meat. And I'm assuming he probably would have said, okay, I'm sorry. I'll get that next time. Option A. Keep it simple. Don't attack somebody. Now, that's not what this article said. This article was going on option B. She said, no, you're missing the point. You got 70-30. I always get at least 80-20. He laughed. Oh, that's all? I thought I really messed up or something. Now, this might be a conversation, experience, or situation many of us can relate to. And I know I can. Um, one partner does something with a good intention, but unknowingly didn't do entirely what the other person had asked. What can happen next is where we realize our unconsciousness in certain situations. Her story continues, that's how it started. I launched into him, I berated him for not being smarter. Why would he not get the more healthier option? Did he not even read the labels? Why can't I trust him? Do I need to spell out every little thing for him in detail so he gets it right? Also, the thing I'm probably most offended by, why wasn't he even more observant? How could he not have noticed over the years what I always get? Does he not pay attention to anything I do? This sets a woman off in a tangent. When she not only attacks him, for him not knowing, she'll go on her Facebook wall, says, I can't trust him, all because of hamburger meat. She'll go on and berate him, make him feel like this, when he had good intentions of doing what she wanted. She sat there bearing the brunt of my righteous indignation and murdering responses like I've never noticed. I really didn't think it was that big of a deal, and I'll get it right next time. I saw his face gradually take on an expression that I'd seen on him in a lot of recent years. It was a combination of resignation and demoralization. He looked eerily like our son does when he gets chastised. That's when it hit me. Why am I doing this to him? I'm not his mom. I suddenly felt terrible and embarrassed myself. He was right. It really wasn't anything to get bent out of shape over. And there I was doing just that over a silly package of hamburger meat that he dutifully picked up from the grocery store just like I asked. If I had specific requirements, I should have been clearer. I didn't know how to gracefully extract myself from this conversation without coming across like I was some kind of split personality. So I just mumbled something like, yeah, well, I guess we'll just make do of this. I'm going to start dinner. When we do something wrong to our spouse, we should have said, you know, I'm sorry. You're right. I, I just got out of shape. That's okay. And then if he's doing that, the, the husband or spouse, which it was, would still get the point. You still got the point across. Next time you better get the daggum stuff that you want it. Get it again. She goes on to explain how she realized her nagging was something over something very small. How many women nag over something very, very small and go out on every uh, fence post and Facebook and blow it out to the portion where the guy's a murderer now? Guy's not fit around to be my kids because I can't trust him because he didn't buy the right hamburger meat. 
And this happens a lot in my life. When I look at you, it could have said, you just didn't buy the right kind. Okay. She's putting her partner in a number of different negative lights that were not accurate to his true character. So why do we do these things so often? We assume that our partner should know exactly what's in our hearts, and when they don't, or they get something wrong, we pick them apart for it. We tear them apart. He didn't get the bed made just right. He didn't corner tuck it. She goes on to explain how she realized her neck. Okay. Uh, she later goes on to realize that it's, in my case, it's my husband of 12 plus years I'm talking about. The same man who, thank, who thanklessly changed my car tire in the rain. The guy who taught our kids to ride bikes. The person who stayed with me at the hospital all night when my mom was sick. The man who's always worked hard to make a decent living and support his family. He knows how to change the oil in the car. He can reinstall my computer's operating system. He lifts things for me that's too heavy and helps stuck jar lids. He shoves a sidewalk. He can put up a ceiling fan. He fixes a toilet when it won't stop running or I can't won't do any of these things. And yet I give him grief about a dish out of place. He's a good man who does a lot for me and doesn't deserve to be harassed over little things that really don't matter in the grand scheme of things. This woman finally came to the realization. Now I could say a lot of things as this person, this woman said about her husband that I've done myself. I reinstalled operating systems. I've shoveled snow on driveways and had my life threatened over it. And I'm making that up. But we forget a lot of the good things. And we break people over hamburger meat. I can say from my own experience that this exact thing has happened to me. And, okay, this so person's going on saying, the biggest thing here we got to do is lack of, it's a lack of communication. If, if your partner has you do a task, okay, Get hamburger meat. Should you always stop and ask, do you have a particular kind that you want? Or do you pick up the kind you think is the best price for the money, uh, good quality? Okay. Well, this is it. That's like asking us to go pick up maxi pads. Okay. <laughs> you know, we don't know. All right. Not unless you tell us exactly what size and everything. We don't know. All right. So lack of communication is the biggest problem. I could tell people, this is how you do it, but unless I explain it in a certain way, and I do it in my art classes, I do it on, on the internet, I explain things in a way people go, I, I understand that. And that's what I really loved hearing from different people, is when I explain things I'm doing, they look at me and say, well, I'm glad you did well, I'm glad you were there, because you explain it so easily. So communication is very, very, very important. The number one thing in relationships, whether it's personal relationships or business relationships, is communication. Understanding, not just listening, understanding what's being said. My grandfathers tell me God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. And I've often told my kids this. Are you listening or are you just waiting to talk? When a person listen, a person is speaking, listen to them. Don't just hear them. Fighting on the smallest details is another one. How many times in relationships do you fight over the smallest details? Does it really matter 10 years from now that you bought a 70-30 hamburger meat instead of 80-20? And we don't put ourselves in each other's shoes. That's the biggest problem with most relationships is you don't put yourself in that person's shoes. How about berating a person over their hamburger meat? He's making that person better. If you're in a relationship with someone, you try to make their lives more enhanced. Make them feel good. By berating them and putting them down because they made a simple mistake, he's making them feel smaller. So... Put yourself in that person's shoes. What if that were you being berated over that hamburger meat? What would you feel like, ladies? If a man says, go out and get a can of oil, knowing the car takes, say, 1040 and you buy 1030, would you like it for him to jump down your case and say, I, that, I can't put that oil in that car? Or what if he, buy, if he says, go buy gasoline for his car and he prefers premium unleaded and you just buy regular unleaded? Would you want him to be the same way towards you? So communication. And don't fight over small details. And put yourself in the other person's shoes. In this case, like I said, option A, she should have said, well, hon, you should have known after this many years that I buy 80-20. I don't like the fat on it. So when you pick up hamburger meat, please keep that in mind. Very simple. I'm sure he would have. But a lot of times women blow it out to where it sounds like an atomic bomb is set off. And then they go on Facebook and say, I can't trust him because he doesn't listen. I can't trust him. He just, oh my God, he just. And now it's making it sound like he's, I don't know, a mass murderer. If you just keep it simple, 
Think about how would I feel if this was done to me? How would I approach this? Hon, um, I didn't tell you what kind of buy, but next time get 80-20. Okay? Very simple. Now, it starts, she ends off by saying this. It takes two to make a partnership. This is so true. This is so true. No one is always right, and no one is always wrong. And you're not always going to see eye to eye on every little thing. You're not. It doesn't make you smarter or superior or more right to point out every little thing he does that's not to your liking or she does. Ladies, remember, it's just hamburger meat. Very good story. I hope you listen to it.